Kelly's southern part of that country in a city with a population of over 700,000. Now, the United States athletes are led by several outstanding gymnasts. Peter Vidmar and his UCLA teammate, Mitch Gaylord, will be there. Both are among the favorites to win the gold medal for the United States. We're going to be putting together a really strong team here. As you can see, there's a lot of good American gymnasts now, so I'm really psyched about that. Recognize this gymnast, Nadia Kamenich. She, of course, was the first. But they will not leave Edmonton satisfied unless they make the top three. Kirk Thomas in 1977. So this is a stepping stone to greatness for a host of our American athletes. Well, the Coliseum, about 20 minutes away from the athletes' village and home to the Edmonton Oilers. But today, it's the venue for the men's gymnastics competition here at the University Games. Hello again, everyone. I'm John Tesh reporting. And as we watch today's exciting gymnastics competition, it's important to remember that three of the Americans who are here competing today have all won national all-around championships in the United States. Mitch Gaylord, the current national all-around champion from UCLA. Peter Vidmar, who won national all-around championships in 1980 and 82. And University of Nebraska's Jimmy Hartung, who won his national all-around championship back in 1981. And with me providing expert commentary is Olympic bronze medalist Peter Corman, also the coach at the U.S. Naval Academy. Peter, the Americans have proved that they can score well on a national scale, but here we are in international competition. And it's a different story, John, in international competition because at the last World Championships, we had a very good team, but we only took fifth. Ahead of us, a strong contingent from the People's Republic of China. Their super athletes have only been in the sport since 1979, but they're amazing to watch. When you speak about men's gymnastics, you have to remember Japan, a very strong history in gymnastics in Japan, and they're always great to see. But since 1978, the team to beat in men's gymnastics has been the Soviet Union. And specifically this team. They have their best performance here. These men will be competing at the 1984 Olympic Games. The current world champion, Yuri Korolev, is here. It's going to be tough for our American men to prove that they're better than fifth. So as the athletes complete their warm-ups here, we should remind you that this is the team competition. Four men on a team from a country, but only the best three scores are counted from each team on the six disciplines. Very simply, when it's all added up, the team with the highest score wears the gold medals. So this is Lou Young, 19 years old, the youngest of the Chinese here at the World University Games. And Peter, the Chinese tell us they have not brought their most experienced team, oddly enough. That's true, John. They have not. They're trying to introduce some youngsters into the competition, hoping to get them ready for the 84 Olympics. But Lu Young is a very strong competitor, extremely powerful, excellent on the pommel horse. Very tough piece of apparatus to start on. A lot of precision required here. And the nervousness can really get to you on this event. Most performers would prefer not to have the pommel horse first. Now watch this, this much, John. A cartwheel right off the end. A fine exercise. Yu Long, are you away for his score? Next up will be Alexander Gorolov from the Soviet Union. You see him there, 19 years old. One of the most powerful gymnasts here, waiting for the score of the pommel horse routine of Hu Young from China. And a 9.45, that would seem a bit low, Peter. It is a bit low, John, in my opinion. However, sometimes in an international event, the judges tend to be a little strict at the beginning and ease up as the competition goes through. So again, we're in the first rotation of six and this. The Soviet Alexander Agorolov, I mentioned one of the most powerful gymnasts. He's really one to watch on the strength exercises. This, the rings, and you'll see him later on the high bar. And there's a good example of that strength. A planche right to an L-cross. Beautiful. In five competitions in the United States in the last two seasons, which is considered a great money for Soviet. Yes, it is, John. They're trying to give Progorov a good chance to do very well in the United States before the Olympics. Watch this this month now. Triple somersault. Beautiful exercise. 19-year-old Alexander Progorov. 
Now up from the United States, this is Mitch Gaylord, 22 years old, from UCLA. We told you, the defending national champion for the United States in the all-around competition. And Mitch is currently fourth on the problem of the United States right now, as he won that title a few weeks ago. You hear that applause there, that's for the score, for Garloff's score, which just came up a 9.8, very respectable score for the rings. A very good way to start the competition. The Americans will hope for scores like that on the Palmer horse. A nice routine, some small form breaks, but a very fine exercise. Our defending national champion, the United States, Mitch Gaylord. As you watch Mitch do his dismount, you'll notice as he passes the horse right there, you saw a leg bend. That's a tenth of a point. For Mitch's score, a 9-4, Peter, another low score on the Palmer Horse. But it is a bit low, John. A 9-5 would certainly not have been too high for that routine. So you take a look at the standings after one rotation of six, and the United States, after some low scores on the Palmer Horse, down in ninth place, the Soviets lead it. And looking across the floor here, Peter, I see Jim Howard, the U.S. coach. It looks like he's in the middle of a protest. No, we're not. We're not debating the range of scores. We're we're debating no, the right. accuracy of the score. Jim referring to the fact that he felt Mitch Gaylor's score should have been higher and the accuracy was wrong in the judgment. So, five more rotations to go before we decide the team competition here at the World University Games. We'll be back. We're looking at Yuri Karloff from the Soviet Union, 20 years old, defending world champions. And also one of the best vaulters in the world, John, is he scored a 9.9 .9 in the world championships in this event. Now, watch the lift and distance he gets from the horse. And a near perfect landing, a very nice ball. Karloff won the all-around gold medal at last year's World University Games. And he is really a force here today. He sure is, John. He was beaten earlier this season by two Chinese gymnasts. He's come here to regain his world championship status again. And his score for that ball, Peter, a 9-7-0. Average score from the four judges, one high and one low thrown out. Now here is Jim Hartung, and as you watch his rings routine, keep in mind that coming into this rotation, the United States team was standing in ninth place. That's right, John. We got a very rough start on the Palmer horse. We need some solid performances here to catch up. And this could be one of them. Hartung, in the last four USA championships, has won the rings in three of them. So he really is one of the our hopes for an Olympic medal. Again, former national champion, graduated last year from the University of Nebraska, which still makes him eligible for these World University Games. Now a graduate assistant. Important move coming up here now as Jimmy gets ready for a double twisting, double somersault. Here it comes. Look for a solid landing. The rest of this routine has been excellent. Here it is. That's going to get a good support. Jimmy Hartung, 23 years old, one of the most experienced gymnasts, American gymnasts at this competition. Here's another look at that. Double twisting, double somersault. Hartung's done this now for three years. Nice lift, nice somersault. One step from the landing, but an excellent routine. And his score, a 9-8. A perfect score, of course, would be a 10. And that ought to help the Americans move out of that ninth place. Now up is Hiroyuki Onada from Japan. His performance will be on the high bar. And you will very quickly see the danger of the high bar as all of these athletes perform on it. Some unbelievable tricks. And this has traditionally been one of the strongest events for the Japanese team. Watch the lift right there. Nice release move, a little close to the ball, but he handled it very well. As you see, Onada's coach, Akiyori Nakayama, a four-time gold medalist in the 1968 Olympic Games. Triple somersault. Excellent job. A nice receive. The crowd loves it. Hiroyuki Onada from Japan with a really fine high bar routine. Doing stunts up there that you just wouldn't have seen five years ago. And watch the lift on this release skill. Look at way over the bar. A little close, but he pushed away very well and kept moving. Waiting for his score now. Uh, 9.8. Great score for Onada on the high bar. Now up on the still rings. Su Chao Chang from China. Chinese preparing for their Chinese national championships very soon where they'll decide who they'll send to the world championship. 
Chinese have only been competing with Jean internationally since 1979. They went in their first meet at the World Championships in the United States and Texas, surprised everyone by taking second and almost beating the Soviet team. And I mention it again, what's amazing is that they tell us this isn't their best team, but they've really been performing well here today. Very well, that's another good example. That was a beautiful game. Sao Chao Chang, and we'll be waiting for his score and a great performance on the rings. Here it is in slow motion. And watch this dismount, watch a tremendous lift, pull on the rings, way above the rings, finishes real high, spots the ground, perfect landing. And his score a 9.65. So as you take a look at the standings after two rotations here in the competition, look what's happened to the United States team up from ninth into third place. And that has happened on the strength of a charge led by Jim Hartung's 9.8 on the rings. We'll be back with more in a moment. After the first rotation, Japan was nowhere near the top three or four positions or anywhere near a medal hunt. After two rotations, they jumped up to fourth place behind the United States. And now a chance to move up even further on a performance by this young man, Mineta Takeyuki from Japan on the floor exercise. And John, the Japanese have a very unique way of doing gymnastics. It's almost treated like a religion in Japan, extremely formal. The workout sessions are practiced with almost no noise in the gym, almost complete silence. And uh, many of the American gymnasts have modeled their own training after some of these great Japanese gymnasts, specifically Peter Bidmore. Pete Bidmore adheres to the Japanese way of training. He's gotten it from his coach, who came from Japan. And Peter gives credit to the Japanese system often for the amount of success he's had. The Japanese, for a long time, the best in the world. What happened? Well, in 1978, the Russians beat them, and the Russians spent a lot of time on working on their techniques in gymnastics when it paid off. But Japan is coming back now. Long history in Japan gymnastics says they want to be champions again. And there's an example, the final pass is floor exercise, Veneta Takayuki, the cheering section, and this score for his floor exercise, a 9.55. Next up on the vault, Lu Yun from China. We saw him do a very fine pommel horse routine. He's an extremely good vault. And watch the distance and height. Perfect lane. That was an excellent vault, John. And China coming into this rotation was in fifth place as we watch the replay of Lou's vault. Now watch as he goes into the pike position. He opens his body up right there. That's virtuosity and a perfect landing, a very nice ball. A perfect score would be 10 and very close, a 9-8 for Lu Yang, the youngest in the Chinese delegation here today in this competition. Next up, one of the finest Soviet competitors. This is Vladimir Artemov on the parallel bars. Earlier this year, along with female partner Natalia Yuchenko, he became the first Soviet, they became the first Soviet pair to win the mixed pairs gymnastics competition. And this was one of the events he did it on, John, a tremendous parallel ball worker. His routine flows very nice. Watch the lift he gets off the boards. That's virtuosity. That gets some extra points in the eyes of a judge. As you watch his performance, keep in mind that from 1952 to 1976, Soviet male gymnasts collected 69 Olympic medals. Very fine exercise, tremendous virtuosity. That's going to get a top score. The Soviets have been performing just flawlessly here in this competition at the World University Games, and this is one of the reasons why. Now watch the lift he gets off the bars right there, way above the bars, a perfect dismount. And his score, a 9.65 on the P-bars. Next up for the States, Peter Vidmar. Oh, the United States was third entering this rotation. Japan and China behind the States. But they've had some good performances in this rotation. This is Peter's vault, and the pressure is on. It sure is, John. He looks for a nice solid landing here. A little low, took a step back, but a nice vault overall. Peter Vidmar, two-time national champion, second this year in the national. And here's a replay of his vault. A good amount of lift, but watch when he lands. He bends his knees, lands a little bit low. Not as nice as some of the other vaults we've seen. His score a 9-5-0, so the judges agree with you, Peter. 
So look at the standings after three rotations of six, and it is tight all the way around. The United States only five one hundredths of a point out of bronze territory. Stay with us. We'll be back with more men's gymnastics later on in this program. Now, Nadia has not competed internationally since the last World University Games in 1981. She is here with the Romanian team, but her competitive status has remained a mystery all week long. And earlier this week, I had the pleasure of an exclusive interview with Nadia. At a much more mature 21, her thoughts have turned toward her future and career plans. She was the perfect 10 before anyone had heard of Bo Derek. Nadia Kamenich, the 14-year-old darling of the 76 Montreal Olympics. And I asked her what she remembered best from those games. The first perfect 10. <laughs> What was it like when you saw the scores? What went through your mind? In, in the so, in 76, I, I didn't know. When, when I saw it, oh, it's 10. But now I can realize what what means. The perfect 10 seven times turned Nadia into an international cover girl. Her popularity may have been the greatest in the United States where she even had her own television special with Flip Wilson. But then came the growing pains. Nadia put on weight and her performance suffered. But she was back in top form for the Moscow Olympics in 1980. She won two golds and just missed a third in the all-around, despite a fall and some questionable scoring. I had a problem in the bars in, in the first day. Something of the beam with the judges. So, so it was a problem. The judges didn't uh, judge you correctly with it. Yes. Nadia has not been in North America since her 1981 tour, but she says her days as an international competitor are behind her. I like to remain in gymnastics to be a coach or uh, to be a judge, and um, I want to way to contribute to the um, progress of our uh, genetics, Romanian genetics team. I know I want to see it, and so many other people do too. Do you at all think about Los Angeles and the 84 Olympics? Is that a possibility? No, I don't think that uh, I'll participate, but I'll be in Los Angeles short. Thank you. <laughs> your, love, your, your English is superb. I wish I spoke Romanian. It's not so perfect like 10. <laughs> 10 Romanian. But I was in America seven or eight times. I see the exhibition for one month or two months, 10, 20 exhibitions, and then come back to Romania. I don't like to stay in and gymnastics competition. Now, after the third rotation, or halfway through the competition, the United States was left fighting to enter bronze territory, while the Soviets were hanging on to their first place team standing. But in the fourth rotation, the Soviets increased their lead on performances like this one from Yuri Karlov. The current world champion, double relief skill on Hagwar, which is why he's the best in the world. And he's not done yet. A third release move coming up right now. And here he comes to cap off this beautiful routine. A nice dismount, the world champion. Yuri Korolov. And also in the fourth rotation while we were away, Korolov's partner in excellence, Alexander Fogorolov. And what we may be watching right here is what's going to happen at the 84 Olympic Games. There's a one and a half twisting release move. And he's not done yet either. Watch this skill coming up. He's the only one in the world that can do it. From the eagle position, full twist, oh. grab the bar. What a routine. And to cap it off, a triple flyway. One, two, three. Beautiful. The Soviet, Alexander Fedorolov. But also in the fourth rotation, the Americans, Peter, had their problems on the parallel bars. Here's Brian Babcock. Brian getting into trouble right there. A little overbalanced. 
Here's where the mistake happened. A back toss, underturned, couldn't stay on the boards. So after four rotations with two remaining, very, very close for the bronze, two tenths separating the United States and Japan. Again, in this, the team gymnastics competition for men, each member of the four-man teams must compete in every one of the six events, but only the top three count. And now performing on the high bar is the Chinese team. And this man, Zhou Li Min, needs a good performance because one of his compatriots scored a low 9-0, Peter, and that will count if Zhou can't do better here. And this is the event where Zhou Li Min should do it on, John. He, this is his best event, the horizontal bar. At the American Cup in 1982, when we saw Zhou Li Min for the first time, he won that event there. The high bar, nine feet high, and it's amazing some of the stunts that these athletes do on it. Zoe Min, second release, still right on the money. A beautiful performance going right now. A solid routine here is going to wipe out that low 9-0 score that came earlier. Looking for a good dismount. All for the team score. And there it is. So the Chinese team performing, and there is Zoli Min on the high bar, waiting for his score from the four judges here. The high and the low will be thrown out, and the average score for his performance, a 9.75. Great performance. Now, the Japanese team have been on the rings in this rotation, the fifth rotation, and the last to compete is this gentleman, Tashi Okati. His three other teammates all scored 9.55s before him, Peter, so he has a chance to improve. Yes, he does, John. But also to keep in mind, the USA is very close to Japan right now. That's a neck-and-neck -neck race, and we're heading into high bar, which is one of our best, our highest-scoring events. Right. Japan was holding on to third place coming into this rotation. A very nice routine here. Those handstands are perfect. Notice his feet stay perfectly together, his body tight. That's what the judges are looking for. Complete control. Now the dismount. That's going to get a top score. So while we wait for Okadi's score, let's go over to the high bar. And this is where the Americans are performing, right after the Chinese. This is Mitch Gaylord. Go, Mitch. This is one of our best events, the horizontal bar. And Mitch Gaylord is one of the best performers in the United States on this event. Remember, the team pressure is really on here to take the top three scores on each one of these pieces of apparatus. Big skill here, John. Yes, he's going real good. That was a very difficult move, and he hit it perfect. Hey, Lord, from UCLA. Here comes the dismount, and triple flyaway. This is critical. Little early, but he saved it. Very nice routine. Mitch Gaylord, as we get the score from the Japanese Okadi, a 9-7 on his rings routine, and Mitch Gaylord will wait for his score on high bar. And Gaylord's average, a 9.80. So along with Jim Hartung's 9.80 and Bruce Babcock's 9.65, that puts the United States in a good position. So after five rotations, the Soviets, China, and the United States is now in bronze territory. We'll be back with more gymnastics and the final rotation in just a moment. The United States, Peter Vidmar getting ready for his floor exercise. And just prior to stepping up on the mat there, our cameras caught him taping his ankles, Peter, that have been bothering him of late. And in the warm-up on this event, John, Peter took a very bad landing, an extremely low landing, a real shot to the ankles. He's in some pain right now. A smile there for the crowd, but still, Vidmar ready for this, the last rotation for all the athletes here at the World University Games. Ooh, another bad landing. Peter's ankles have been very sore. The question in my mind, John, is, is he going to do his full routine or is he going to leave things out? That would hurt his score if he did, however. Another low landing. Still to come in this floor exercise, Jimmy Hartung and Mitch Gaylord, both from the United States, will take the top three scores to decide the total for this floor exercise. And, John, this is a team score right now. Peter Vidmore is thinking about his team. They're in contention for second. Oh, no, his ankles are sore. He stumbled there in a very basic move. His ankles are very sore right now. 
Peter could have scratched this event, not gone at all, but it would have put the team score in jeopardy, or he could have even made this routine a lot simpler. He hasn't taken anything out. But still to come, this very difficult dismount appearance, a double pike somersault. Is he going to do it or take an easier one? It's the hard one, and he did it very well. Peter Vidmore, an heroic move here at the World University Games. Two-time national all-around champion Vidmar, and he looks like he's walking a little tenderly there, Peter. You can see the determination on his, on his face right there, John. He's got to work real hard now. As he cringes as he hits the floor. And the judge is preparing his score now. I see a 9-4 for Peter Vidmar. So not only pain, but a rather low score as well. A low score, John, because of the stumbles, but keep in mind this is a team effort, and when you, when you take one of those four men out, you're really putting the other guys under a lot of pressure to hit cold. Peter wouldn't do that, and I'm glad he competed. And now that pressure, such as it is, is on Jimmy Hartsong from the University of Nebraska. He's had trouble with this skill right here this season. Triple twist. That was a nice one, John. Little stumble, but not a major deduction. We saw him miss that at the national championships earlier this month. It really is heartening to see Jimmy Hartung competing with Peter Vidmar. Hartung from the University of Nebraska, Vidmar from UCLA. They've been rivals for so many years, and now they're together on Team America. And this is certainly a team. I'll tell you, John, these guys compete against each other all year, but when they get together at a competition like this, this means every bit as much to Jimmy as competing for the University Look of Nebraska. Look at that strength move. This is Jim Hartung's last chance for team usa to compete today he'll be followed by mitch gaylord and they have to turn in some good scores because they'll be followed by japan and china and the united states could go from anywhere from a silver to a bronze to no medal at all depending on how well they do here japan to compete on vaulting and china to compete on floor a fine double back to cap a very good exercise we're putting the pressure on both japan and china so Jimmy Hartung now, following his teammate here at the World University Games, Peter Vidmar. And congratulations from his coach, Jim Howard, and the rest of the team. And his score, a 9-6-0 for Hartung's floor exercise. So a good score. And upcoming will be Mitch Gaylord, who will also have to turn in a fine score. And this will be the last performance here. Here's Gaylord for the Americans today. Nice, full twisting double back, a small step back, but tremendous height and rotation. And Mitch was on the last World University Games team, John, two years ago. In 1981, they took eighth place then. Here it is, two short years later, and we're in contention for second right now. Defending national champion in the all-around gymnastics competition, Gaylord, after he was forced to sit out on the bench as an alternate in the 1981 World Championships, he apparently became disconcerted with his coach, Art Sherlock, and he left UCLA to train and be coached by world champion Kurt Thomas. That, of course, didn't work out. Last year, decided to return to school and just recently won his first national championship. What a comeback. And, it, and it's just the beginning of that comeback because Mitch Gaylord is looking to do things internationally. This is a good chance for him. His last pass. Nice double back. That's an excellent routine. That's going to get a top score. Team America finishing for the day here. And high fives all around for Mitch Gaylord. He'll be waiting for his score. And his score on 4X, a 9.65, very respectable. And what a courageous day. A courageous performance by the man now on ice, Peter Vidmar. And I know just how he feels, John. He's saying to himself right now, I can't believe I made it all the way through that routine. So the Americans in the clubhouse, the Japanese and the Chinese to follow with the rest of the sixth rotation. We'll be back with the final. But later today, but right now, let's go back for the conclusion of that close men's gymnastics competition. Here's John Tesh. While we were away, the Japanese finishing out this team competition in gymnastics on their last event. The vaults, but the best vault they could manage was a 9-7-0 performance by Tashi Okada. And so now the Japanese virtually out of the top three, and the Americans ensured at least a bronze medal. They stand in second place as China will finish out the competition. And now on the floor exercise, Su Chao Chong. China is the only one who can take that silver away from us now, John. The Russians have first sewn up. 
A very nice routine here, going into his last pass. He needs a solid landing. The tens of points are counting now. A fine exercise so far. Oh no, he stumbled back, over-rotated that just right out of the area. That's a major break. It's all a mistake by Tzu Chao Chang. And I got to imagine that the pressure could have been a factor there as we wait for his score from the four judges. The average score on 9-3, Peter. So now the first competitor for the Chinese on the floor exercise scored a 9-3-5. And with the arithmetic here, that means that China needs a 9-7-5 to tie for the silver, a 9-8-0 to win the silver. They can from take the it United away from the John. This is Wang Wo Fu. A tremendous floor worker. Wang Wo Fu, tremendous, just did a double back, punch front somersault, extremely difficult, and he did it very well. We should mention that even if he does not get that 9-8-0 to win the silver, there is one last Chinese competitor left. So he would still have a chance to snatch the silver. Look at this move. Very nice, a full twisting flare, very difficult. And you know, John, you have to think about the Soviets right now. They were devastating in this thing. They never gave anybody a chance. Yuri Korolev proved again that he's the best gymnast in the world. He won the all-around outright. They were just very strong. But a good showing for the American team, although they really did not look as consistent as we've seen them in national competition this year. Final pass. Looking for a 9.75 to tie for the silver, a 9.8 to the Chinese to capture the silver. The a good dismount might do it, John. A fine routine. That was a very good dismount. It's going to be close. We'll wait for the score. Remember, again, the Americans are guaranteed at least the bronze. And then Huang Wo Fu's score, there it is, a 9-8-0. So the Chinese do capture the silver medal. The Soviets come away with the gold, the Chinese the silver, and the Americans the bronze. Right now, let's go down to Peter Corman, who is with the bronze medalist, the American gymnastic team. Congratulations, guys. Third place. You, you've proven that you've moved from fifth to third in the world against some tough competition. Uh, yeah, I thought that we did uh, fairly well today. Uh, we could have done better. Uh, I was a little disappointed with the, uh, the judging on pommel horse. In fact, I was very upset with it. We had two excellent pommel horse routines that should have gone at least 9-8, and for some reason the judges uh, uh, get, came up with 9-4, 9-4-5. It was very upsetting. So as you watch the gold medal Soviet team exit the stadium here, disappointment from the Americans who thought they could have won the silver, but I think a proud finish with the bronze medal in the team competition. And in the individual all-around competition, a Soviet sweep with Yuri Korolev taking the gold medal and his two Soviet counterparts coming away with the bronze and the silver. For Peter Corman, this is John Tesh reporting from the Northlands Coliseum. An interesting note on that men's gymnastics awards ceremony. As far as anyone can tell, it was the first time ever in a major athletic competition that the Soviets, the Chinese...